Hello and welcome to the first of my series, which is going to be rereading the Star Wars books. Not all of them, but we'll see how many I will do. And I'm opening it up with Phantom Menace. I blanked out <laughs> for a minute. We have Phantom Menace by Terry Brooks. It's going to be this reading vlog. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to tab it and this vlog will be spoiler filled because I mean I don't see the point in it being a fun vlog otherwise so I will comment on certain lines or thoughts that I have and I'm really looking forward to dive back into these because I sort of remember what was extra but I read it like three years ago so I am definitely due for a reread and I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I will and and you should stop saying that word let's just get into it this is an odd angle but We'll deal with it for now. <laughs> I just read the first chapter, or prologue, I don't remember what it was called. And it's the one where Anakin is in a pod race, and he's telling how he can feel everything around him, and it was such a good beginning. I forgot how much I loved it. I'm already getting the feels, and I'm one chapter in, so this reread is going to be very, very... Hopefully not emotional, but very enjoyable. So, I don't know how much more I will update now while I'm reading because it's late. So I'm not supposed to be talking really right now, but <laughs> hopefully if I have a very good thought, I will be able to force myself and take out the phone. So, one chapter and already loving it. I'm just going to read a little bit because it's so bloody cute, so excuse the angle. Of those, he was closest to Qui-Gon, his mentor for more than a dozen years, who had become his most trusted friend. Qui-Gon under understood his attachment and shared it. Obi-Wan was the son he would never have. He was the future he would leave behind when he died. His hopes for Obi-Wan were enormous, but he did not always share his students' beliefs. Be patient with me, Obi-Wan, he replied softly. A little faith sometimes goes a long way. I forgot how much I loved their dynamic. Like, I read Master and Apprentice this year, but they're beautiful. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are precious. I absolutely love them as sort of father and son, and their dynamic is, in my opinion, extremely underrated and not talked about enough. I mean, it only happens in Phantom Menace, true, but it's it's precious, it's beautiful, and it helped Obi-Wan become the person and the best Jedi that he could be. I just read the chapter where Anakin saves a Tusken Raider. And if you read it, you know just how emotional it actually is, because we know what happens with the Tusken Raiders next time that Anakin sees them and this just makes it somehow more sad. These side plots in the books are bloody heartbreaking <laughs> because they're mostly something that you don't see in the movies that adds more emotion and layers. This is why I love the prequel books. They add so much to the movies, like yeah, you have your basic plot and the battles, but when you strip away the battles, which is mostly the visuals, you get the story and the emotion and... <sighs> wow, it's just wow. <laughs> I remember loving this so much and I think I'm gonna love it again, but... It just adds so much to something that I already loved. <laughs> When he saves the Tuscan and he realizes the Tuscan is scared of him and just wow, um, my wig has been taken already. I'll try and be quick with the update because my phone is literally dead. But I was reading this last night. I came to like page 150. I think I was reading to like 3 a.m. and I was having the best time. I it was so emotional, like. After the Tusken Raider thing, then everything with Anakin and Qui-Gon and Qui-Gon's thoughts. And I love this book so much and I'm so happy I'm rereading these. I'm in such a Star Wars mood. I mean, I'm always in a Star Wars mood, to be honest, but I'm just loving it. It's the best. I'm going to try and 
finish it today. I mean, I know I will, but we'll see how much I can read now while I'm waiting in the car. So, if the phone doesn't die, I will definitely update more. I ventured outside because <laughs> I've had enough of my room. And I'm gonna read outside and finish this book. I took like a two day break. I just wasn't in the mood for anything. I didn't watch anything. I didn't read anything. I just chilled. <laughs> so, and ran around town trying to buy things. So, we will continue now. In here I have the book. I'm not sure you can see it. We have tea, which is dark Turkish tea. So, we are prepared and flowers that actually started blooming even though it's like autumn I have no idea what seasons are anymore I realize this angle is less than ideal <laughs> but here we are I'm almost at the ending this is depressing <laughs> because like the part where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon don't speak to each other because Qui-Gon decided to train Anakin and the entire sequence where it's like they still weren't speaking to each other, and when Anakin tried to apologize to Obi-Wan, he just brushed him off, and I'm just here screaming like, That's your future brother, Obi-Wan. Can you not? <laughs> like, I love you with all my heart, but... I get why you're angry. But this is just depressing, because you know that Qui-Gon's gonna die soon, and Obi-Wan's gonna be with Anakin, and... I don't know, it's just freaking sad <laughs> to know what happens let me not even get into knowing what happens with Anakin and Obi-Wan but I know Qui-Gon is about to die so I'm trying to suck in every single line that he has and enjoy it while I can this is just sad that before he died they weren't even on speaking terms I just realized something that is wrong I'm not usually one to obsess over numbers and like how accurate they are but I disagree he Obi-Wan is just thinking and he's like he'd been too close with Qui-Gon for too long to let a momentary disagreement put an end to 20 odd years of friendship and if he is in his mid-twenties which I don't think he's supposed to be he's supposed to be like 24 or 25 they don't become bad ones when they're like five so they're definitely they've definitely been together for like 10 years not 20 so like Terry <laughs> Terry what are you doing this is wrong <laughs> They haven't been friends for 20 years. We know that for a fact. They're not Padawans at age of five. They're barely in the temple by that time. I mean, this is wrong and I am angry. My hair looks a mess in this lighting, but it's okay. This is just killing me. They're gonna, they're about to attack. And Anakin is like, I'm so glad that Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are talking again, especially because they were disagreeing about me and he's precious. He is a precious baby. He literally went away from his mother. He doesn't even know if he's going to be a Jedi. He's immediately thrust into battle, but he's just like, they'll all be okay. They'll all be safe. I'll protect them. That will be his job. His mouth, his mouth tightened with determination as he made his pledge. He wants to protect them, and he immediately feels like they're his new family. And the Jedi were scared that he was too old to be shaped, but look how quickly he actually attached to Qui-Gon and the rest of them. Like, I think within days of being Obi-Wan's Padawan, he would immediately be like, okay, he's my family now. And I know they thought that was a flaw, and that was something that the Jedi messed up with their no attachments rule. I think they just could have worked with him and it would have been completely fine. Like, he is a precious baby, but they did their best. They did their best to push him away and to exploit the fact that he had feelings. I don't know, it just makes me a little angry <laughs> seeing how precious he is in the beginning. It, I am angry. And Qui-Gon's gonna die now, so expect more updates until the ending. I have, like, this much left. This is killing me. It's killing me. I'm gonna just read a little bit because I'm not gonna cry because I don't know, I'm just not in such a mood today, but it's very, very close. It's like, <laughs> but he was young and brave at heart and he had lived his life pretty much on his own terms because to live it any other way would have broken him long ago. It hadn't been easy doing so, especially as a slave. 
He had survived mostly because he had been able to find small victories in difficult situations and because he had always believed that one day he would find a way to overcome the circumstances of his birth. I am dead. qui is about to die. And this just breaks my heart. He would one day overcome the circumstances of his birth. He's going to be a slave his entire life. He's going to be a slave to the Jedi Order, then he's going to be a slave to Palpatine, and then he's going to die. So yes, you're not going to overcome the circumstances of your birth, Anakin, and it depresses me. It really does. <laughs> At least for a period, you're going to find a new family and love. And in the end, your son's love will save you. So. There is a positive side to this. It's just really depressing right now. And qui is about to die, so. I really wonder what would have happened if qui was the one to train Anakin. I know that's impossible because someone had to die facing Maul. Or the Sith wouldn't really be a threat. But it would have been really interesting to see the combination of qui and Obi-Wan with Anakin. It would have been really interesting. I wonder if it would have changed anything if qui would have taught him how to defy the Jedi Council and be a Jedi in his own right, so I wonder. Wait a goddamn minute. <laughs> I know this was written before the second movie was even out, so obviously they didn't know, but <laughs> Qui-Gon Jinn was one of the most able swordsmen in the Jedi Order. The Jedi Master he had trained under, so Dooku, had considered him one of the best the Master had taught in his more than 400 years in the Order. We know this isn't Dooku because he's human. He can't be 400, so... <laughs> I don't know, this is kind of funny. <laughs> How, like, two years before the movie, George didn't really know <laughs> that Dooku would be Qui-Gon's Master. I mean, I think it's funny. The little inconsistencies. I know he had the, like the entire story mapped out, just not the details. Just like when you read the original novelizations, it doesn't match up with the prequels. But this is just so funny to me, because it's like before the second movie, it's the same trilogy, and it's like the Jedi Master Qui-Gon trained under is over 400. We know that it's not Dooku. <laughs> so I don't know, this is just funny to me. Maybe it just means the Jedi Master that kind of helped him learn to serve, but yeah, Jedi Master he had trained under definitely tells me he was his Padawan, which Dooku isn't 400 years old, I think he's like 80. <laughs> so I don't know, this is just a funny detail. I like the little inconsistencies, but yeah, definitely let me know if I'm wrong and there's another person that maybe took over Qui-Gon's training, but I don't think so. I think Dooku left after. Qui-Gon was actually done with being a Padawan, so yeah, let me know what the hell is up with this. I just like these small inconsistencies, they don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it's just funny to me. I'm in the end game now, so I might just do a little time lapse of me reading and I'm gonna pause every time that I have something to comment, but for now, they're fighting with Maul and there's two things I'd like to talk about, two things I tabbed. It, the first one is just funny to me, how Qui-Gon knows that the Sith Lord is a living example of what the Jedi Master was always telling Obi-Wan about how to best hear the will of the Force. So he's basically like, even this fucker is better than you right now, Obi-Wan. <laughs> I mean, I love you, but you need to listen to me more often. I'm about to die. And then the other one is, Qui-Gon had trained Obi-Wan, and while the younger Jedi was not yet his equal, he believed that one day Obi-Wan would be better than he had ever been. And that just bloody depresses me again. This is just... I think if I was in a more emotional state, I would be sobbing at this point already, but... Alright, let's try out the time-lapse thing.
the lighting just disappeared. Okay, I hope that was watchable. You will see in the finished edit, clearly. But Qui-Gon is about to die and I am stressed out. So, breathe with me. I'm about to die and I'm gonna let you <laughs> watch me freak out without the speed thing because this is going to be difficult. <laughs> Good master, Obi-Wan thought, urging him on voicelessly, anticipating Qui-Gon's sword strikes as if they were his own. I am not loving this. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> Too late, Qui-Gon recognized the danger. The blade of the Sith Lord's lightsaber caught him directly in the midsection, its brilliant length burning through clothing and flesh and bone. Obi-Wan thought he heard the Jedi Master scream, then realized it was himself, calling his friend's name in despair. He was slumped forward and motionless when the lasers abruptly went off again and Obi-Wan Kenobi, seething with rage, rushed to his rescue. <sighs> I'm not feeling alright. And then now it cuts off and it's gonna be Padme and Newt Gunray, but... I am not alright. I hate this in the movies, but it's even worse when you're reading it from Obi-Wan's perspective. So if you haven't read this book yet, <laughs> my god, do. For some reason, the sun just decided to come the fuck out <laughs> in a very unfortunate angle. So if I'm squinting, that's why. But we're back to Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. So I'm going to continue reading this out to you because I am not going to be the only one that suffers through this. So let's just enjoy. <laughs> He struck at the Sith Lord with his lightsaber, as if his own safety meant nothing, lost in a red haze of rage and frustration, consumed by his grief for Qui-Gon and his failure to prevent his friend's fall. Just kill me, it would hurt less. Where's- where the fuck are my tabs? <laughs> Sorry if I'm swearing, I swear a lot when I'm angry. So, I do apologize, but I didn't mark this video for kids anyway, so. This is killing me. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but I don't care. So. Obi-Wan is about to win. I can't wait. <sighs> How he hears Qui-Gon's voice. I know Qui-Gon's not dead yet, but don't worry, Obi-Wan, you're gonna hear him again. He's gonna be with you all your adult life, teaching you.
he's just hanging off now, but he's gonna jump, get Qui-Gon's lightsaber, and kill Maul. Temporarily. <laughs> if you've watched the Clone Wars. So... I don't, don't worry, I'm not gonna bother you with <laughs> the entirety of this ending. I don't want you just sitting here and looking at me panicking, but I will probably read out a couple more lines until the ending. Alright, let's lead, read the last, the last little bit where Qui-Gon dies. Master, he breathed in a whisper. Qui-Gon's eyes opened. Too late, my young Padawan. No. Obi-Wan shook his head violently in denial. Now you must be ready. Whether the council thinks you so or not, you must be the teacher. The strong face twisted in pain, but the dark eyes were steady. Obi-Wan, promise me you will train the boy. Obi-Wan nodded instantly, agreeing without thinking, willing to say or do anything that will ease the other's pain, desperate to save him. Yes, master. Qui-Gon's breathing quickened. He is the chosen one, Obi-Wan. He will bring balance to the force. Train him well. His eyes locked on Obi-Wan's and lost focus. His breathing stopped. The strength and the life went out of him. Master, Obi-Wan Obi Kenobi repeated softly, still holding him, bringing him closer now, hugging the lifeless body against his chest and crying softly. Master. Oh. <laughs> I'm very close to tears right now. Very, very close. Didn't think I would be because I know what happens. I never read this book before, but it really has been a while and I don't remember the entire thing being from Obi-Wan's perspective. This just killed me. Also, on a more positive note, Padme is a badass. <laughs> She is a queen, and I love her, and she's only 14. I love them so much. I'm gonna come back to read out the, the thing with Obi-Wan and Anakin in the end, but I'm just trying to think myself into not crying right now. <laughs> oh god. Wait, I'm confused. He says Qui-Gon's lightsaber at his belt, now his own. I mean... Does he get Qui-Gon's lightsaber as his own? I thought they always made a new one themselves because it didn't fit their grip or weight or and it wasn't connected to their spirit or whatever, but I don't remember him actually taking Qui-Gon's lightsaber. But anyway, we're in the ending now. We have a couple of pages left. So I will read out what I think is relevant. He stopped pacing and stared momentarily at nothing, thinking of Qui-Gon Jinn, his master, his teacher, his friend. He had failed Qui-Gon in life. No, he hadn't. Obi-Wan, you hadn't. But he would carry on his work now, honoring him in death by fulfilling his promise to train the boy, no matter what. Listen to me, he thought, smiling ruefully. I sound like him. Yeah, how will one surprised that the council decided against the advice of Yoda? <laughs> He's really concerned about Anakin. Obi-Wan spoke carefully. I will take this boy as my Padawan, Master. I will train him in the best way I can. But I will bear in mind what you have told me here. I will go carefully. I will heed your warnings. I will keep close watch over his progress. Obi-Wan bowed in acknowledgement. I will remember. Together they went out in a blaze of light. 
you know, this is not the ending. There's going to be more. And the funeral is going to happen now. But this was just great. This was incredible. I just need to tab something real quick. <laughs> and then I'm going to continue reading. I feel like I'm talking way too much also. Can the sun just stop moving? <laughs> like, this sucks. Anywho, I'm gonna just read. <sighs> Obi-Wan found himself remembering. For his entire life, he had studied under the Jedi, and Qui-Gon Jinn in particular. Now Qui-Gon was gone, and Obi-Wan had passed out of an old life and into a new. Now he was a Jedi Knight, not a Padawan. Everything that had gone before was behind a door that had closed on him forever. It was hard to accept, and at the same time, it gave him an odd sense of release. He looked down at Anakin. The boy was staring at the ashes of the funeral beer, crying softly. He put his hand on one slim shoulder. He is one with the Force, Anakin. We must let him go. The boy shook his head. I miss him. Obi-Wan nodded. I miss him too, and I will remember him always, but he is gone. Anakin wiped the tears from his face. What will happen to me now? The hand tightened on the boy's shoulder. I will train you, just as Qui-Gon would have done, Obi-Wan Kenobi said softly. I am your new master, Anakin. You will study with me, and you will become a Jedi Knight. I promise you. The boy straightened, a barely perceptible act. Obi-Wan nodded to himself. Somewhere, he thought, Qui-Gon Jinn would be smiling. Not sure if you can see my face right now, but... This is the closest it appears I got. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I actually... Oh god. I actually teared up at that. <laughs> if I'm reacting this way to Phantom Menace, I'm gonna be a wreck <laughs> when I get to Revenge of the Sith. But this is what these blogs are for. For me to just document my emotional journey wading through these books as if it was for the first time because I read them so long ago that it just went out of my memory but deep breath <laughs> damn this like at this point I'm just reading out the book to you it's like this is an audiobook style of me I'm sorry if I read something incorrectly English isn't my first language but I'm just gonna read some more because I think I have like, yeah, this is the last page, so enjoy, even though my heart is like breaking in two. <laughs> he should have been happy and satisfied, and he was, but his happiness and satisfaction were not, were clouded by the sadness he could not banish at losing Qui-Gon and his mother both. They were lost to him in different ways, to be sure, but they were gone out of his life. Qui-Gon had provided the stability he required to leave his mother behind. With the Jedi Master's death, Anakin was left adrift. There was no one who could give him the grounding that Qui-Gon had provided, not Obi-Wan, not even Padme. One day, perhaps. One day, each of them would play a part in his life that would change him forever. He could sense that. But for now, when it mattered most, he felt all alone. So he smiled, but he was sick in spirit and lost in heart. Perhaps sensing his discomfort, Obi-Wan reached over to put a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Oh god. I can't handle this. I'm an emotional reader. This is killing me. The Jedi smiled. He would have been proud to see you a part of it. I'm, he's talking about the parade. I skipped a couple of lines. The boy looked at him. Do you think so? I do. Your mother would be proud of you as well. Anakin's mouth tightened and he looked away. I wish she was here. I miss her. The Jedi's hand tightened on his shoulder. One day you will see her again, but when you do, you will be a Jedi Knight. Obi-Wan's just... Obi-Wan isn't telling him, like, you should forget about her and attachments. And He knows how much he loves Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon and be realistic. I mean, Obi-Wan loves the team, so he knows. But he's not telling Anakin to let go of his mother. He's literally like, you'll see her again one day and you'll be a Jedi Knight and you'll be able to do whatever the hell you want and you're going to save her and you're going to love her one day, Anakin. And I think that's very, very nice of him. There was a mosquito on my hand. I hate them. Nothing can ruin this mo moment for me, though. He, he's like, he's comforting Anakin, even though he basically doesn't know him. He doesn't have a relationship with him at, at his at this point. But he respects the fact that he's sad about Qui Gon, understands that he misses his mother, and he's like, I will train you. 
and I will be here for you and I will support you and one day you will go back to your mother. <laughs> and we know what happens in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> 10 years from now. Dear Lord, I'm just gonna finish the last half of the page and then we will wrap up my thoughts even though you got a very large run through <laughs> over my ranting the last however many minutes. So. <clears throat> I'm done. Just gonna tap one last thing and then I'm done. Yep, done. Changed angles because that other one was unfortunate. So, I'm done. <laughs> you just saw the amount of emotion I had. I remember loving the books, like I genuinely do, but I don't remember it being this good. <laughs> like it adds a whole layer to Phantom Menace, and I love it so much. You get Obi-Wan's thoughts, Maul speaks more than one sentence, you get Anakin's worries and emotions as he leaves his mother and how he feels about everything. and. I am a sucker for the novelizations of Star Wars because I loved those movies always. But this, these books add such emotion and complexity to the world and to the characters. If you love Star Wars even a little bit and you read, I encourage you to pick up the novelizations because they're incredible. Especially the ones for the prequels. They're so unlike the movies but also like the movies that you fall in love with it all over again just like I did even though I already read this like three years ago so this was perfection I am so happy I reread this and you know which vlog will be next probably more emotional than this one I hope you weren't too bored <laughs> watching me just lose my mind over things I already know and yeah I hope you enjoyed this I loved it five stars it was incredible and my love is renewed for this story so yeah that's all i have to say on the matter i will see you in my next one which is going to be attack of the clones see you